What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Unfortunately, I am losing my voice a little bit, so I'm gonna talk a little bit softer than usual, so I don't go into a coughing frenzy and have to cancel the video. So today we're gonna review the Arendelle 1723 Bookshelf S THX speaker. And the reason I wanted to check the speaker out is I loved the 1961 bookshelf. I reviewed it a while ago and it was absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, it was a little bit of a niche product and Arendelle has discontinued it, but we're gonna find out if the big brother is even better and worth the cost. So let's throw those main specs on screen so you guys can check that out. I'll tell you about some specs and standout features I think are cool. Um, we'll I'll tell you what the speaker sounds like. I'll tell you how it compares to other speakers in and around this price point, and then we'll wrap up the video. First and foremost though, what the hell is this THX thing all about? I'm sure some of you guys wonder. You see products here and there that have the, those three letters, THX. What, what does it all mean? Well, the complicated version, it's, it's some kind of certification. They do a collection of measurements and there's testing that has to be done, but this is what it really all comes down to. It's really simple. It means the speaker can play incredibly loud without falling apart. It can take a lot of power and play tremendously loud. That, that's really what it means when you see that THX, uh, um, you know, lettering on a product, right? So this speaker, if you've got a bigger room uh, for whatever reason, or you like to really rock out, this speaker will do it, you know? Um, so standout features. Uh, anytime we review an Arendelle product, the first standout feature is always fit, finish, and build quality. It is absolutely on another level. It's what they're known for. Attention to detail. Top tier. You can spend twice as much money and not see build quality this good. It really is impeccable craftsmanship, and my hat is off to them. They use HDF instead of MDF in the cabinet. And the speaker just screams quality. I would consider this an heirloom piece without a doubt. Around back, we have uh, uh, what a bi ampable, what do you call them? Two pairs of binding posts. Yeah, we'll go with that. Two pairs of binding posts that are rhodium plated. So they're never going to oxidize on you or anything like that. They're always going to give you the best signal transfer possible. And even the connectors are rhodium plated. Like attention to detail. Like it, 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 it's shocking to see that, you know? Um, they give you little channels, um, for, you know, in case you want to like wall mount the speaker and, and a wire needs to run through there. There's also wall mounting options on the speaker, despite the fact that the speaker is not tiny in, by any means. I'd consider this as far as bookshelf speakers go to be medium size. If something like a Bacard S400 Mark II is a compact bookshelf, not small, but compact, this is definitely on the medium side. Um, it's, it's a little bit wider than most speakers and things like that. Anyhow, I digress. Some other standout features. Arendelle makes their own drivers, and I think that's pretty cool. Let's jump into what the speaker sounds like. The, oh, real quick. I know I already talked about fit and finish, but, but the way the cabinets are finished in this matte white, again, absolutely incredible. Um, the speakers are about $1,600 at the time of this review, and let me just get this out of the way. The price is absolutely fair and you're definitely getting a lot for your money. Some people might look at Arendelle and say, hey, this is kind of like a theater company. You know, they got the THX on the speaker. It means it could play real loud, most likely in a theater environment. How do they handle music? Are they any good? Yeah, they're good for music, guys. If a speaker's got to be good for theater, it's it's got to be good for music too and vice versa, right? It, it's There are cases where some products are really just for theater, um, usually it's in the very like uh, inexpensive price category, like the Monitor Audio Bronze 100. I would call that a theater speaker. It doesn't do very well with music. It, it sounds very dry and cool in the mid-range, um, but that's really not too much of an issue in a theater environment. Um, but, you know, once you get into the stuff that costs a little bit more, if it's good with theater, it's going to be killer with music. And uh, let's let me tell you what it sounds like. So first and foremost, the speaker stage is very wide and very tall. Um, absolutely incredible with that regard. And, and it conveys a sense of distance that very much reminded me of the Kef LS50 Meta. And I thought that was funny because the smaller Arendelle 1961 bookshelf that's now discontinued also reminded me of the Kef LS50 Meta. 
Um, and I, I mean, hey, Arendelle's got a house sound at the end of the day, I guess, right? Um, but the treble is going to be mostly neutral, ever so slightly on the forward side of neutral. A lot of clarity, a lot of sparkle, a lot of snap. The attack is not aggressive, nor is it softened. I would say the attack is very neutral uh, of the treble. Leading edges are very clear, and you got a lot of definition. Those of you that like to hear your detail front and center, the 1723 is absolutely going to do that for you. It's not going to ram it down your ears aggressively by any means, but it is going to put that detail that's maybe usually a few feet back. It's going to be now a few feet forward, right? Again, in a lot of ways, much like the Kef LS50 meta. I'm getting ahead of myself, though. We'll do that comparison in just a little bit. Um, yeah, so look, again, the top end, it's all about clarity, effortlessness, and staging just oh my goodness the staging right moving down to the mid-range again we have a neutral affair um it's not warm it's not tonally rich it's not dry it's not cool it is dead to rights neutral everything sounds correct as it should and guys when a speaker is mostly neutral in the mid-range there's not a lot to talk about um, let's talk about bass there's no mid bass bump to speak of i like that the speaker's tuned to be linear this is a sealed design, however, so there's not going to be a whole lot of bass output. Um, I would say a subwoofer is definitely going to be a part of the mix here, uh, despite the fact that the speaker is not slightly on the larger side. And essentially what Arendelle's done there, right, is they chose to go with a sealed design. Most likely, my guess, is probably one for the benefits the sealed design offers. You know, a little bit better transients, tighter bass, more articulation, better control, and things like that. But also it does allow the speaker to handle quite a bit more abuse and play a whole lot louder, hence being able to get that THX rating. Um, so it's definitely not a bad thing by any means. One benefit actually to sealed speakers, very, very, very easy to pair them with a subwoofer, incredibly easy. It is so easy to integrate a subwoofer with a set of sealed speakers because you don't have to worry about the bass coming out of the port, canceling out anything. I love that so much. It's very rare that I get a set of sealed speakers in for review, but when I do and I have to connect a sub, I get like kind of giddy because I know it's not going to take me more than one minute. I'm, I'm going to guess the settings initially. I'm going to sit in my chair and listen based on like half a song. I'll go and change some settings and then we're done. It's literally that easy when a speaker's sealed. Um, so look, from top to bottom, we've got mostly a neutral affair. This is a speaker that's pretty much all about accuracy. Um, the look, forgive me, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit under the weather. So if I already said this, whatever, but maybe bears repeating. One thing the speaker did that was interesting to me, and again, I hate to keep making this comparison, but much like the Kef LS50 Meta, it really gave me a sense of distance to the sound. Um, because you know, I use these speakers, you know, obviously for a lot of music, but you know, I play video games, I watch movies, I watch TV shows. And when I review speakers, I put them through all the paces. I don't always talk about it because I don't think you guys want to sit here and, uh, you know, watch me talk about how the speaker performed in a video game environment, you know what I mean? Or while watching my favorite, like, anime or TV show, you know? It's not what you guys are here for. Most of you guys are here for the music, right? Um, but the speaker was able to convey a sense of distance, like when I was playing a video game or watching a movie, and there was something, like, further away, right? You got the sense of that. When something was closer, you got the sense of that. And dynamic output was also very, very good. Meaning like when there's a crescendo in a song, right? So let's say a singer is singing and then they put a lot of power behind their voice and it's gonna be like louder, right? The speaker does a great job at conveying that with a really good sense of scale and realism. So overall, if you're looking for a fantastic speaker that is dead to rights neutral for the most part, isn't gonna color the sound in any way, and instead gave you really big stage staging, really good clarity overall, uh, just a really good clean sound and not add anything to the mix. Here you go. You know, let's jump into some comparisons so I give that'll give you a little bit more context. Let's do the first one, the LS50 Meta. I've brought it up like three times now. This is a very similar sound, honestly. Um, the two speakers sound very, very similar. The biggest difference is the Arendelle 1723 stages much larger. The Kef LS50 Meta has good width. I always felt its soundstage height was very short, among the shortest of all the speakers I've heard actually. The Arendelle 1723 stages wider, deeper, and substantially taller. 
Another major difference is, um, and I've seen this comment, I've gotten comments like this where people say, I want to buy an LS50 Meta for my living room, but my room's on the bigger side and I'm worried the LS50 Meta can't play as loud as I want it to. They got a room that's like, you know, 20 by 25 or something. Here you go, get this instead. This can play tremendously louder. It's a, it's a larger speaker, that's no surprise, right? Um, and that's not to say the LS50 Meta can't play loud. It, it can get, uh, I'd say, plenty loud for its physical size, right? It's a small speaker, guys. Um, but yeah, if we're talking about the treble, the two speakers have very similar treble. It's hard for me to tell you one's better than the other, aside from the 1723 staging larger, taller, more of a wraparound effect. Um, both speakers image well. Both speakers have really good separation in the treble region. I would say the 1723 is just a little bit more effortless overall with its treble. Moving down to the mid-range, again, both speakers are fantastic with their mid-range. Um, the Arendelle is going to stage larger again with width, height, depth, and so on. Moving down to the bass, the LS50 Meta doesn't have a whole lot of bass. Um, it's a vented speaker. The Arendelle 1723 is a sealed speaker, so it also doesn't have a whole lot of bass, but it does give you a little bit better tone and texture because it is a sealed speaker, a little bit better uh, um, transient response and such, right? So overall, it's a similar sound to the LS50 Meta, but slightly better in quite a few key areas. So if you've had your eye on the LS50 Meta, but perhaps you didn't like that it was so small, or perhaps you didn't like the aesthetics of it, here you go. This is a fantastic alternative. And for the same price, 1600 bucks, at least as of this filming. Let's do another comparison. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry guys. I told you I'm starting to lose my voice. Um, let's talk, I keep telling myself before I sit down and film, I should probably have a list of what I'm going to compare these things to. But for the, for those of you that don't know, these videos are all shot from the hip. There's no planning. There's no script. I just sit down and whatever comes out of my mouth comes out and I decide everything on the fly. So let's compare these speakers to, um, you know what? We just reviewed these. Let's talk about the CSS Crichton one TDX. That's a DIY kit. It's about a thousand bucks. Figure another couple of hundred bucks for finishing supplies, and the, the price is pretty similar between the two speakers. Totally different sounds. The CSS Crichton 1 TDX is going to be ever so slightly on the forward side of neutral. I would say the Arendelle 1723 is going to be more on the forward side of neutral, more effortless, more clarity, more detail retrieval. It's going to take that detail that's going to be a few feet back in the uh, CSS Crichton 1 TDX, push it a little bit more forward. It's not going to be aggressive in any way, of course, um, but it, the clarity easily is going to be more on the side of the Arendelle. Moving down to the mid-range, the two speakers, again, very different sounding. The Arendelle, all about neutrality. The CSS Crichton 1 TDX, all about flavor, warm, tonally rich, romantic, velvety, whatever you want to use to describe a warm mid-range, that's the CSS Crichton 1 TDX. Moving down to the bass, again, the speakers could not be more different with the Arendelle, where, where the Arendelle is very linear with its bass, with a very natural roll-off being a sealed speaker, the CSS Crichton 1 TDX is an absolute bass monster. A subwoofer is optional. It has incredible extension and bass output for a bookshelf speaker. What else can we compare this bad boy to? Do one more review, and then we're going to wrap it up. Let's do a Bacart P300. Similar price, uh, about $1,450. These are about $1,600. Um, the Bacart P300 is just a little bit darker than the Arendelle 1723 on the top end. I wouldn't call the Bacart a dark speaker necessarily. Call it more neutral, but the Arendelle's a little bit more on the forward side of neutral with its treble. The effortlessness is absolutely on another level with the Arendelle. Big win in that direction for Arendelle. The Bucard is, I wouldn't call it a congested sounding speaker by any means, but directly compared to the Arendelle 1723, the Bucard P300 can sound a little congested up top. The Arendelle is going to give you more detail, more better detail retrieval, more resolution, any word you want to describe to use to describe clarity and air and separation, etc. The Arendelle is going to take the win in the treble region. It's more refined even. Um, moving down to the mid-range, again, the two speakers are going to be fairly different here. Um, the Bacard is going to be on the warmer side, not as warm as something like the CSS Crichton 1 TDX, but the Arendelle is dead to rights neutral in the mid-range. No coloration. It's all just clean, clear sound, whereas the Bacard is going to give you that warmer mid-range. Moving down to the bass, 
the Bucart P300. Um, if I said S400 at any point, that was just an accident. I don't know if I did or not. Sorry, guys. Again, feeling under the weather. The Bucart P300 has a lot of bass. It's a bass boosted speaker. No surprise there. The Arendelle 1723 bookshelf STHX is linear with its bass and a sealed speaker, so it's going to have that natural roll off. It is not going to have as much bass, but the bass you do get is ever so slightly higher quality with better transient response, note to note distinction, and handling of delicate passages. So that's the comparison. And with that, I'm about to lose my voice, so I've got to start wrapping up this video. This YouTube channel does have a free Discord server. Feel free to join that Discord server. You can also ask questions in the comments below. Ultimately, I think this is a fantastic speaker, and I'm happy to say that because I really liked the 1961 bookshelf, and I was sad to see they discontinued it. But to see the 1723 build on all the greatness that that little 1961 bookshelf had and take it to another level, absolutely love it. Um, Arendelle continues to make excellent products at price points that kind of don't make sense. If this speaker was sold, you know, like in a store, I I'd expect it to be well north of... Honestly, like with the build quality, you can kind of put it around like... Kind of like 3K, honestly. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd say at least 2,500, 3K. That, like that wouldn't be crazy, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. We're going to wrap it up, guys. Until next time, later.